Good evening, you beautiful people out there. This is Twitch.tv Zero OC, and welcome back. Saturday evening, Zero's Witching Hour, episode 4. What is the Witching Hour? It is a fun little humorous interactive art and design tutorial where yours truly will be trying to explain a couple of things, teach you a few things about drawing, painting, design in a digital, as a digital medium, uh, specifically in Adobe Photoshop CC 2015. That's the software we're using. And as you can see, a first time feature at this time, you can see my hands and my keyboard and it's glowing. It's glowing purple, the keyboard. This is because I will be explaining some hotkeys to you. And uh, in a second, I'll show you. And the cool thing is um, that this uh, picture you're seeing here of, of my hand is not coming out of a webcam, but I'm using my smartphone, right? And the phone is not actually directly connected to the computer, save for the charger, which, which is plugged in. But uh, the, the camera feed is actually being streamed, right? Via a, a software called IP Webcam, uh, which you can get for free in the Play Store. And it streams a webcam, and then you can add it into OBS as a video capture device. So uh, if you don't have a webcam, this is a good alternative. It's not 100% in sync, but it's about, yeah, it's like three or four frames behind, which is really very good for a stream thing, right? Cool, cool, cool. So yeah, these are my fingers. This is the keyboard. In case you're wondering, this is a StarCraft II. Razer Marauder keyboard. Um, this is a gaming keyboard made for made for games like StarCraft, obviously. Uh, Heroes of the Storm, etc. But yeah, it's it's a nice keyboard with good good feel, good touch. You know, you're working on this a lot, and if you're using hotkeys a lot, you want a good keyboard. It's very important. So that's the technical side of things. Let's quickly go back in time and summarize what we did last couple of times. In the first episode, we looked at basic shapes, color theory, just a little bit about the process of, of layering a drawing and uh, just getting started in Adobe Photoshop as a drawing tool. And I showed how you can build a simple drawing with a couple of, with a couple of layers and brushes in Photoshop. In the second episode, we already took this all a bit further and we learned a little bit about uh, composition, the golden ratio, we learned about proportions, general male-female proportions in drawing and art, a few rules of thumb when, uh, when, when drawing the proportions of heads and basic stuff like, like thumbnailing shapes, you know, silhouettes are important, and of course, we used our friend, our old friend Donatello, to explain this, this is not his cruddy Vegeta, but yeah, we used Donatello. This is a, a painting which I would consider to be about 20% done, which is already a lot further than, than this, which is just a sketch. That's not even a digital sketch. This is already a little bit further, but as you can see, we did some doodles around and did a, dived a, dove a little bit into the philosophy of things when recognizing faces and shapes. And yes, uh, on we went. And uh, now, I guess... What we'll begin to do is, is start piecing the different parts together. Our basic shapes, our basic proportions, you know, basic compositional techniques and uh, design fundamentals to explain how a more complex drawing is made. And for this, uh, I'm going to use an example of a piece that I'm working on right now. It's a contest entry for a drawing contest. I don't usually enter competitions because I think uh, competitions for drawing are very silly. But this one, the theme was just too cool. It's called The Dark Side of the Duck. And uh, it's basically a, a DuckTales Star Wars mashover. And uh, I decided to go with our old buddy Donald as the protagonist. And so we can start looking at what it takes to draw a bigger like Donald who appears deceptively simple. But as we can see, I've already prepared a couple of things that we need to 
consider when when constructing when drawing something that is supposed to adhere to a certain style donald duck is very recognizable perhaps the most recognizable fictional figure ever statistically it should be and uh, there's a specific way that you're supposed to draw him of course you can take a few liberties but if you go too far off it won't look like donald anymore so here it is the proportions again of course donald is shorter than a human so instead of eight heads tall he's four heads tall the proportions are different the legs are short you know like in humans the legs will go all the way down to here that's the difference right different shapes how the eyes are drawn you know you got to practice that if you want to do a convincing convincing drawing right and people have made blueprints that you can use his shoulders slope from the neck you know you you and you got to practice these lines the soft lines to make it look like donald uh, my, my favorite disney artist uh, incidentally is don rosa don rosa is awesome uh he made a lot of Scrooge McDuck and, and Donald Duck cartoons back in the day. I, mean, I think he still does. And he's actually going to be at this comics convention in Vienna in, in October. And uh, I plan to have my drawing finished by then and hopefully he'll sign it for me. That would be super sweet. Super sweet. Um, so yeah. This is Donald, you know, different heads, different emotions. You know, you need to familiarize your yourself with how if I want to draw Donald, I need to know what Donald looks like when he's happy, when he's sad, when he's angry, when he's confused, when he's surprised, etc. Right? Because he exists. We need to break it down, right, to the simplest shapes that we can draw with, as we learned in the first few episodes. Here is the circle, right? Of course, Donald is a duck, so his nose isn't so far up, but he's got a beak, so it's further down. You see how it's drawn from the front. And the basic shapes filled in and if we can if we have a frontal picture and a side picture we can construct the drawing from any perspective with a bit of practice here it just shows you what you should do to draw it and obviously you don't need to draw it in this order there is no law for it but yeah here's Donald just like in different poses right but because this is going to be a more epic drawing, a Star Wars drawing, I thought that normal Donald wouldn't suffice. So we, I think I would like to go with his superhero alter ego, Super Duck, or Phantomius in, uh, in German, Phantomius. So, you know, you got to start drawing Donald. This was the first try. This was my second try. This was my third try. First hotkey, control, and the plus key zooms in. Simples. Let's keep holding control. I'm just not going to use the middle finger to flip you guys off. If you keep holding control and then we scroll with the mouse button, it moves left and right. If we hold Alt and scroll, we zoom in and out. This is important. Control and Alt are very, very important controls in Photoshop and in general. What else? Photoshop is divided into layers. Often, here as you can see, I have over 40. And if I want to select a specific one, I need to click and press at the same time. If I want to select Super Duck here, I hold Control and click. And now his layer is selected, layer 35. And now I can move. Oh, that's just the color. That was that color, right? This is why Photoshop needs to merge the layers together. And then you can. But I need to do that properly. Uh, merge layers is Control E, by the way. Let's bring up, oh, it is here, the history. But yeah, so anyways, so this was the third attempt of me drawing Donald. Already much more recognizable with the hat and stuff. That's all really way too sketchy. This was the fourth attempt. It was already with the super dark mask, already looking a lot better. This is the first attempt at coloring it, at cleaning it up. And this was just like a sketch of the full figure for the first time. And um, like I would kind of stylize him a little bit when when it comes to the end product. And uh, I thought that the Super Nintendo game, Donald Duck in Maui Mallard, was awesome. It had the coolest Disney style ever. And like I kind of want to model it a little bit after that from the motion and the fluidity. So yeah. Um, so I practiced drawing Donald with, you know, line art and painting. The colors I always put onto a new layer. 
i.e. a separate layer from a from the line art, right? Layer 24 here is the line art and layer 25 is the paint. Let's move them closer together as you can see. As I clicked, I held control to select the specific layer that I wanted. Okay, now these are separated as you can see. But if I would want to print it, uh, let's go back in time. If I would want to print it, wait, now I'm selecting the wrong layers. Go away, Mari Mallard. There. Yes. Now, okay, now the color and the and the line art is in the correct place, but they're in, in separate places. If I'd want to move them both together, there's different ways I can do that. Either you select both layers, hold shift to select layers, and um, you you press link layers, and then and then they and then they wrong way, and then they move together, right? Then they move together and they're locked together. But if I would want to copy the the line art. And the drawing into my clipboard now that wouldn't work if I pressed Control A to select everything, right? You can see the marching ants around the whole canvas, and then Control C to copy, as you know, and then Control V to paste. It'll paste it right on top of it. No, it'll paste it over here. But there is no color, as you can see, even though those two layers were linked. So what that means, we need to merge them later for print, or if you just want to move it as one. You would merge these layers, Control and E, merge. Now they're one. Now I can move it. But of course, as you merge layers, you need to consider that you lose control, right? Because when I have the history thing is so awesome, you can go far back, and I need to go far back often because I make a lot of mistakes. Um, if you're just editing the paint or the color, you know you want it on a separate layer. Or they're linked still. Unlink them. Or select it. Derp. Yeah, so you can manipulate them um, individually. I think that's an important skill to have is to separate your layers properly. That's, um, yeah, that's important. So let's go on. So Donald Duck is our protagonist. But, of course, there's a whole other side to it, the dark side. It's the dark side of the duck. So we need to draw a full-on scene, right? You can't just draw a single character and expect to do well in a contest with it. You need to put him in a setting, have him do an action uh, corresponding to the theme, and it needs to be epic, right? It needs to be epic. So how do we begin? As you can see, this is, a, this is already a different file and have deactivated all the layers on it, right? So I'm going to activate them one by one. So you see what it, what I do, how many layers I use in, to get to this stage. And this is just the first draft, right? So here we go. Right? So we, we got some, where's my mood board? Right there. So, 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 so. I need to find it, find it, find it. Which and which and which and values, values, values. But anyways, there was more. I, I saved like some Darth Vader pictures and some for reference and of the throne room of the Death Star. So what do we need? Let's zoom out. We need a background and a foreground, and we need a mid, a middle layer. Also, we need some basic compositioning. I put in some of the guidelines that we talked about in the first. Uh, I think in the second episode, we talked about the golden ratio. And the rule of thirds so i put those in already because i don't really want to center stuff too much i want the main action to be a little bit away from the center in the golden ratio where my eye is drawn to so that's what the lines are for here's already a hint of something in the background so let's keep going uh-huh uh-huh interesting shapes geometric shapes circles keeping it simple this is a, a picture of reference of the throne room in the Death Star to get the symmetry right. Beginnings of a planet in the background. The planet is taken from Google Images, but I need to paint over it. Just need to put a right one so I can imagine it in the beginning. 
yeah, here it was like scribbling over where the line is supposed to be, right? Then, basic characters, basic silhouettes of the figures, where are they going to be? The way these two figures are posed, I chose this specifically because this is like a new poster for one of the new Star for the new Star Wars movies. This is going to be an iconic image. Kylo Ren on the left with his weird claymore lightsaber and, I don't know, maybe Luke Skywalker's children will be fighting. But yeah, like so I wanted to choose those specific poses because people will be able to recognize them as a Star Wars image. And I want Donald to be in the middle over here facing us, whereas Duck Vader, Darth Vader will be looking at him with his back turned to the camera somewhat. Let's continue. Uh -huh. Pull in some space where the windows are. Some more. Pretend that there are stars. Uh -huh. Yucky. Ooh, make it darker. Ah, paint the planet. Interesting. So make the sphere green and blue and brown. Ah, uh, begin to add some separate values. Because there is, of course, a window panel and metal in front of the, in front of the planet. How's the sound, guys, by the way? How am I doing? And we continue building it up from the back forward. That's how I like to begin. These are just put as cinema scope lines so I don't lose oversight because I wanted to have a frame. Here I, I draw in the very, very basic positions and shapes of the two main figures in the drawing. We continue. Make it dark. See where the action line goes. This. This is a perpendicular, like this is a triangle, right? Uh, a 45 degree triangle. We get some things going. Aha, we've got some circles happening. Ooh, body, head, shoulder, second shoulder. Uh huh? Uh huh? Shoulders? No, this is the, the torso, this is the left shoulder. That's the elbow, that's the hand. That's the head. Those are the legs. This is their range of movement and base color theme. Orange versus red. Just uh, draw in a silhouette for the body to begin to anyways. Aha. Uh -huh. Hints of a background. Perhaps is that a figure sitting on something? What could it be? Dear God. Yuri says it's good. Thanks, bro. And yes, as you see, ooh. Here, let's make something, something happened. Almost tell what it is. More detail. Ooh, black cloak. Uh -huh. Separating the background more, adding more details. Ooh, here we made a big step. Actually painting Super Duck in. Uh, I actually opted to go for Super Duck and not Donald dressed as a Jedi. I don't know why, but I just kind of like it more like this. What do you guys think? Yeah, just here, work on the cape a bit, separate it a little bit from the background so the colors don't mush too much. Very important. Ooh, lightsaber positions. Follows this line, follows this line, it's a cross. Ah, frame. Just fix the hand a little bit. Ooh, stars, highlights, what the hell? What's going? Ooh, and the mid-ground, the middle comes. Making sure that we're able to see that this is a window pane, that there's stuff between space and us. Ooh, some detail. Uh, I, tr I like to draw these faux kind of 3D wire prints. So I know where the shapes are at and whatnot. Here, add to the, to the silhouette of the cape. Make it stand out more. Separate it. Bring it into the foreground. Give the painting. Layers, levels, foreground, midground, background, important. Here, play with it a bit, make it brighter, make it darker, so forth. And yeah, that's like, this is the basic composition of, of the painting, right? This is a super early draft, but you can kind of already tell what direction it'll go. I continued. Let's see what happened. What? <laughs> Let's go all the way back. Huh? So that's where we left. Put in a bit of a color gradient. Start fleshing it out. This all adds texture underneath. You know, when they 
analyze like the paintings of old masters, they often x-ray them because you can kind of see these layers also when, when you x-ray into painting, which is fascinating, I think. Ooh. Bit more work done on the shadowy figure in the background. Interesting. What's this wood? Make add a bit of a metal texture to the background. Ah. Detail shadow in the background. Bit more color. Ooh. Red glowing eyes. Watching a duel. Working on that planet a bit. Working on it some more. Working on the midground some more and on these on the floor. This part of the floor is so weird. I mean like Donald is casting a shadow forward, right? That's a uh, that's the crux. Here, more work done on the cape. Begin adding some values to that, to the uniform. Whoa. Add more darkness. The dark side is taking over Vader. Here, make it all a little bit more plasticky. That's going over layer, over layer. Go over the lightsaber again. Of course, the lightsaber, the easiest way to draw it is you just draw red and then white in the middle. Make it seem hot. White is the hottest. Hotter than red. Here, more work done on the cape. A little bit more. A bit more work done on the face. Let's zoom in a bit so you can see how high the resolution is. It's very high. And the. Uh, oh, it's got like a little wee wee in his face. Yeah, so you see, kind of solidifying it a little bit. Wow, brightening it up again. Darkening it again. Where was I? Ah, next. See what it looks like with a white frame. And uh, yeah. Then, of course, the next step was this a value map. Very, very important. It looks like not much. Uh, but when we go back, we realize that this is one of the most important things. We need to really push the different values apart the highlights mid-tones and the shadows very 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 important so your your piece looks plastic right so it looks tangible here shadows vader's cape and on the helmet in the background in the front of the in front of the throne there is a shadow as well let's push it more separate them a bit more gray background here um, there was more, but just a second, guys. Uh, four already a bit more. Ah, there we go. So this is where we left it. Yeah, add a bit more stuff in the sky. No work on those stars a bit blurred again, add some nebulas. It's still still quite far away, but it's already a lot, a lot better. Ah, oh, scratch this stuff all. Let's close that. Mirror and thing is open. Dark set five. Now I'm sure you'll manage. Yes. Here we already made it quite a bit further. Um the painting has become wider right do you see so how did we do that make the canvas wider important alt control c is the canvas size for example if i change the height add at the bottom and the top and it will add it in the color that my background color is set my background color is currently set to black if i press x switch the cool two colors I have selected around so let's go back canvas size is very different than image size alt control I this is image size and here if I say let's make it 
2000 pixels wide it will just scale it rather than add physical size to the canvas there it's become smaller but the proportions of the canvas remain the same image size and canvas size very very important very very important lots of things are very important i suppose ah down on the shadows cleaning up those sides a bit as with cropped here you can kind of see the lines so this is fixed rough still but we're always on the side rough so Whoa. some more values on the lightsaber some more values in the background Blurring the, blurring the edges, bringing it a bit closer together. Pretend that there are some wall panels here. Uh, not loving how that's like a line. Control and delete is fill, right? So if I have black set as my background color and I press control and delete, it fills it. So, now that weird line is gone, kind of, let's go back to, and yes, now this picture is already a lot wider, as you can tell. What time have we? 30 past. Just gonna have a glass of water. I've been rambling for half an hour already. Have you guys got any questions? Yo. Uh, let me just check the various chats. Looks good. How are we looking on YouTube? Looking good. Yeah, pita. So yeah. Mm -mm. So, this now what you see. This is the second draft. Um, we're still far away from being finished, but there's a lot more already added to the picture. Let's go back so you can see the difference. This was the first draft. This was us just creating a scene, placing the characters, putting down some basic colors, and um, playing a bit with the composition and the light and stuff. Where are the main focus points? And this is how far we've taken it already. The the figures are more refined, the lighting is better, there's more texture, more layers, you know. The picture has become larger, there is a discernible kind of background, it's still all a, it's still all too muddy and too blurry, but it's already looking like something and it's already looking pretty cool, I hope, I think. How long did this take me? So far I have invested six hours roughly maybe four and a half maybe five and a half something like that of actual work into this um, digital painting um, the first bits right like making the draft and uh, and fleshing it out a bit that's actually done pretty quickly like this is maybe now four 35 or 40 percent done if right and compared to Donnie Donnie is like 20 percent done maybe but it's already further as you can tell you know like hopefully by the 10th 10th episode of the witching hour we'll actually have produced a finished painting to which I Leo is just enjoying the show everyone's having fun I'm really happy to hear that guys Truly, truly, I'm super self-conscious about this. I gotta tell you, like, I'm always nervous when I do this. I think I know a lot about art and design and have a lot of practice. And I even teach this shit, but every time that I try and sit down and talk about it, you know, I feel a little silly, like, talking out into the nether. But I'm really happy that, that you guys enjoy this nonsense, you know, of me drawing, painting. So, yeah, how would we continue, right? Just keep adding layers. I would probably keep working on on the main character next. You know, like, you can kind of 
tell how he's standing, but it's still a bit iffy. Like this leg should probably be a bit further up and a bit longer, and this foot isn't placed properly, and you can't see the outlines, and it needs to be cleaned up, a bit separated. You could even give him a very slight glow to uh, separate him from the background a bit more. The same goes for Vader, you know, you need to make sure that there are some easily recognizable shapes, especially on the helmet. It's so important, like this Darth Vader helmet is such an iconic thing, and if we get that wrong, it'll look shit. Excuse my French. Stop you doing it. Aw, oh, thanks, nerd. That's very sweet of you. That is sweet. Uh-huh. Where's my water? So yeah, for me, like this kind of stage, when, when I've built the scene, when I've placed everything and I'm more or less happy with the ways the guys are standing and the overall feel of it, this is where I enjoy it. And this is where you start adding detail, layer after layer of more stars, text on the planets, paint in some clouds draw in like the corona of the atmosphere like a slight glow you know make sure that the figure is completely discernible that each step can be seen that you can see the proper outlines of the throne that he's sitting on you need to suggest shape simple shapes that people recognize you know, we need to make sure that the the background looks more like metal and that you can tell that that's separated that the floor i mean it's not going to be pink at the end it's we're going to be more like a metal color at the end i suppose this is just the way it's turned out at this stage you know and then you just begin adding more more, more textures star textures planet textures metal textures and um but the longest part is actually cleaning up the figures and getting the figures of the line right and the way you progress is you start with big brushes and you work your way down right further and further down so it becomes smaller and smaller so, it's a, so you just basically have a very thin line tool to draw with at the end and your very top layers and at the very end when you're finishing a painting you should only be drawing with perfect black and perfect white to 100% opacity on each to get that finished look on the lines as you can tell the moment they're not perfect black they're actually like a dark red kind of color you can see here uh, after yeah you need to clean it you need to make it look like it's been meticulously inked by a disney master did you know that um most of the donald duck stories are actually written in italy would have thunk. Uh, Paparino, he's called in, uh, in Italian. Papernik is a super duck. But yeah, as you can see, this is all very blurry still. Oops, that's, that's not good. And you would just work until. Let's take a perfect, perfect circle here and make it like as small as we're probably gonna get, which is actually like two pixels probably. One pixel with paint uh, brushes are too jaggedly, I have found. I don't know why I can't see this shit now. Is there a selection? Let's see, give me one. Wow. Well, yeah, interesting. But yeah, so, um, what other little tools and tricks can I teach you, you know? There's the of course, the select tool is V. Um, A is the, the mouse pointer, cursor. T is text. La di da di da di da. K k k k k. Uh, Photoshop isn't terrific for if you're if you're not practiced with it, it's not terrific for text editing. Uh, because if you scaled up and down 
photos and images in Photoshop, uh, you often lose resolution and um, text is meant to stay at very specific resolution, so it should usually be added last, especially when you're working in bitmap file formats. Uh, what's a bitmap? A bitmap is a pixel-based image, like this one here. You can see all the individual pixels, and each individual pixel has a color value, right? We can check the color value that each pixel has with the color picker tool. Click, and then it has been selected, gets selected here. It's like a very dark purple, and this is the hex code, which you can also use in website editing and stuff. So you always, always get the same um, color tone again, which is sweet. Then, of course, there's more color libraries. This is a bit more advanced um, print knowledge and color knowledge. The Pantone colors for printing. You need to know the numbers. Various printing processes require different color profiles. Um, nowadays, it's really not that complicated, and people will usually stick to one or two of these formats. But And Pantone is... Um, uh, it's very pop. It's a very popular format for real life colors. So, be aware. Be aware of that. We're using hex colors. Zooming in and out. Yeah, maybe I actually kind of like that. It's not perfect black. I kind of like that. It's these color gradients: red, beige, black. The hat still looks way too shit. But as you can see, I just used the circle, circular brushes, to add shapes on top of each other. Red. Right? That's how it works. This how it works. And uh, yeah, you know, you would need to paint it, paint on it until you're happy with it. Um, the point where a drawing or painting is finished is not set in stone. It's up to you. There is such a thing as op overworking a drawing and underworking it, of course, as well. Uh, I, f I find that like with with drawing and stuff you can really you can often really tell when someone put a lot of time in it and when they don't like you can always recognize if it only took five minutes or not I mean the skill is if you produce simple looking graphic design that's actually very difficult to make a simple design you need to understand complex shapes very well and be able to break them down into the simplest simplest recognizable silhouettes and shapes that's what graphic design um, and especially corporate identity is all about recognizability right how much can we boil down a shape or design until we always recognize it as ours bam this is an entire industry and it's bullshit I mean no but yeah you know what I mean I'm not gonna comment on the politics industry Anyways, um, so yeah, Donald, right? There's still a couple of things wrong uh, with his pose, the way his weight is, is shifted, and I think the length of his legs and the foreshortening uh, is, is not quite correct. I like uh, in, in drawings, you know, there's always parts that you like more and that you like less than others. I really like how, it, how the lightsaber turned out. I think that's pretty cool for now. Uh, I also like the... The, the highlights on the on the helmet so far here on the eyes on the top and there in the crease um, at the moment I'm un very unhappy with the way the capes are looking I mean Vader's cape is better but this needs to be more sushi it's not really going in any particular direction this could be better um, the sky needs to be a lot more detailed and separated like here because this is like a metal strut you know by the time that we're done it needs to be 100% separated from the back so we have a very clear border right like now if we zoom out a bit you know subconscious like consciously that's already a much better distinction you know this bit versus this bit and it's just two straight lines um pinning it in place basically 
so yeah we need to make sure that the symmetry uh, is properly done that the windows the symmetry of the window works that it works with the perspective of the protagonist and uh, need to fix the floor uh, his shadow pointing forward isn't quite correct there's still random white bits here that shouldn't be there you know like Vader's figure, his fist and stuff, he's got like a clenched fist, can't really tell right now, this all needs to be better, more clearly defined. Um, yeah, just keep adding layers, keep adding detail. It's gonna be a wild ride. Uh, I'm gonna keep working on this painting, especially tomorrow in the in the evening, late afternoonish. I'll be working on it. Because it needs to be done by September 11th. Yeah. Cool, right? Hope you like it. Uh -huh. uh, where was I? Where was I? Did we do it? Let's quickly do that. I don't remember what we're looking at here. Functionality of Photoshop to see in particular. Some more tips and tricks of the trade in Photoshop. Some more hotkeys. Um, to make it all simpler let's make a new image with just one layer aha this is something extremely important that I almost missed control plus n makes a new file escape control shift n makes a new layer right new layer but what we want is a new file so control n uh, name it blah blah whatever right and paste in what we copied control V as per usual for pasting and now we can play a bit with, with it show I'll show you guys some controls for Photoshop control T is transform that means I can make it smaller bigger rotate red skew whatever I want escape go back control T transform let's make it a bit smaller Next, if I hold uh, first V for the select tool, then control click to make sure that we've got the right layer selected. And now if we press Alt and hold it, click on our layer and drag, wow, we have successfully duplicated it. There's even a new layer. Um, yes. Control T again if you hold Alt while uh, moving aside it'll change it proportionally in both directions when I don't hold Alt it just goes in one direction again Control T if I hold Shift the aspect stays the same while changing the size as in it's not getting taller or fatter or anything like that. It's just getting smaller and larger. Important because if you don't hold shift, uh, it's it's like manual and you're, you're, you're probably going to lose the original aspect ratio of your, of your drawing if you do it like that. Escape, go back. As long as escape is, as long as the transform uh, is active, right? As long as the, the squares are around it, we're safe. Like we can always go back. Rotate, la di da. Yes, escape again. Let's go closer. Aha, let's use our hot kills. Con control, plus, plus, plus. Control, scroll, go side, alt. Uh, by the way, if I'm not holding, if I'm not holding control and I scroll, I go up and down, left and right with control. Yeah, Just so you guys remember. Control, U. Very important, very awesome control, very powerful tool. Hue, saturation, and brightness control for this layer. Okay, not for the whole image, just for the layer. What does hue mean? Hue is what? What? Uh, the type of color, saturation is how strong the color is. No saturation. Black and white, full saturation is uh, cancer. Let's go back. Lightness, full is 
for white, colors for black. Of course, the second option, colorize, tick that, and then uh, we will give the whole painting one new color, because we don't want that. So just, again, control U, and you can do this individually for each color type, right? Just the reds, no saturation. Just the reds, full saturation. And for blues, same. You know, I just want to make the blue red all of a sudden. If I can do that. Yeah. Um, yum, 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 yum. More hotkeys, control L is the levels panel, the levels window. Um, the three levels are your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. If I pull this left, the highlights get stronger. If I pull this right, the shadows get stronger. If I pull the mids right, the mids get darker, and the mids get lighter. That's the trick. You know this, guys. Presets and stuff. Photoshop is epic. Uh, what are you on about, Yuri? Are you talking about my show? <laughs> oh, cause some kind in the middle. Ooh, a new follower! What's up, dogs? <laughs> These nuts! <laughs> <laughs> These nuts came Got in the mail today. <laughs> got him! <laughs> <laughs> we got Phoenix3! Thank you so much, dude. Awesome to have you. Yoshi is here for you, doing a little dance. Yoshi! Yoshi's Island, one of the Best jump and run games ever made. Ah, uh, hotkeys. Control L was the levels. Control M is the curves. The curves is it's similar to levels, but vertical on a, on a Z, uh, on a Y and on a Z axis, or is it an X and on a Y axis? Who knows? You can make specific parts painting brighter. Colors darker in general, like it's it's just for you to play with. Giggity, giggity, cool. One of the most powerful additions in recent years to Adobe Photoshop is the camera raw filter. I'll very briefly look at it now, but we'll we can do a full episode on this shit later if you want. This is insanely good. So control uh, shift control A da 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 camera raw filter. Bring it, baby. Let's load it. Why is it not loaded? What is the camera raw filter? It's actually made for photos, and uh, you can change every every single aspect of your pho photograph using this. But also, of course, applies to paintings that we made. If we painted them correctly, our painting will also have highs, lows, mids, saturation, exposure, and high value, and so forth. So we can use it as a tool for uh, paintings too. But it's actually not for photos. Exposure, self-explanatory. More exposure, brighter, less exposure. Darker, photography basic, color temperature, warm, cold, high Kelvin, low Kelvin. That's how you measure color temperature. The tint, greenish tint or purple tint, however. Contrast, push the colors up, push the shadows up. Low contrast, push the colors down, push the shadows down. Yo, highlights. Only the only the bright bits become a uh, yeah so bring in some shadows. Shadows is not changing anymore. Come here. I'm giving you a website link and always went insane because you have your stream playing and I didn't know I heard double. <laughs> well, thanks for visiting my website, mate. Like it? The mech is called Perseverance. Perseverance. We will persevere. Clarity. Less clarity is more blurry. More clarity is sharper. Pushing the whites. Vibrance. Make the colors more. Wow. More powerful. 
situation similar but different levels like before sharpening tools well well noise reduction make it smooth again you know play with individual color values lens correction if you're using a fisheye lens you can turn it into a normal lens you can make perspective happen and uh, the resolutions you can do this with if you're actually taking photographs in raw format and not in jpeg jpeg um you can change the values in the camera raw filter without ever actually affecting the quality of the photograph which is amazing um so yeah if your camera has the option take photos in raw dot r a w um they will be much larger files but it's it's worth it the quality gain is incredible you can add some vignettes and whatnot But yeah, the, the camera raw filter, like, you can edit, like, 300 photographs in 20 minutes, like that, if you wish. What's wrong with my keyboard? Yep, yep. Oh, I think the phone moved a bit. Ah. What? Yeah. Lighter away. See that? Uh, derp, 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 derp. Any more quick hotkeys? I think. Lightning with, yeah, Control S is save. Control Shift as. Control Shift S is save as. So let's set me up a range of format. And Control Shift Alt. Uh, wait. Control Shift Alt and S. Is save for web. Uh -huh. Web graphics should not be this fucking big. They should never be 5,000 pixels across. Nonsense. Look, that just broke Photoshop. <laughs> um, these kind of high resolutions are like high resolution photography and print. I don't know why Photoshop crashed now. It's just, it just choked, but it doesn't matter. Since we're almost finished anyways, let's quickly go back. Summarize. <laughs> Photoshop. Yeah. Uh, Photoshop is, is actually a cloud service. It's a, a companion program is called the Adobe Creative Cloud. And I mean, it's not really that you're always online, but kind of it's a bit of a bummer, but it's also really awesome. Um, this is best solution on the market right now but that doesn't mean that it's the best it could be but it's still very very awesome the creative cloud don't get me wrong yeah where where do i leave you i suppose we have done a second draft this is how far we've reached the first episode we Laid down the idea in the very basic shapes. Second episode, more complicated shapes, proportion, composition, um, some design thoughts. In the third episode, uh, some anatomies, some more proportions, golden ratio, how you can uh, place the figure in the painting, considering light sources, backgrounds, foreground to midground, and that's, that was like a first draft of a painting, Donatello. Let's quickly bring him back. Uh, Donny, 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 Donny. Donny is like a first draft. Here you can see it coming through. Good, some basic stuff. And uh, the dark side of the duck is base, is a second draft at this stage. And hopefully by next week, we will have a finished painting to show you. I'll be doing the third draft tomorrow during the day at some point. Hopefully I will find the time. I do have to work Sunday. Ugh. But, you know, 
for the cause. But I will be I will be continuing this um building it up with each episode until we reach a finished drawing or painting. So you guys can see the full process from start to finish, setting out the idea, putting down an initial sketch, fleshing out your idea a bit, fleshing out the drawing, beginning to add details, colors, composition, placing figures in motion, placing them in accordance to each other, figures interacting in the scene, using themes to convey ideas, using colors and shadow and light to convey ideas and themes. These are also topics we'll be covering. More technical stuff will also, of course, be somewhere on the horizon. But for now, I think this is where I leave you with Zero Switching Hour, Episode 4. Super Duck and Duck Vader facing off on the Death Star. Making progress. Save that. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If, if you if you enjoyed that, um, click that follow button, share it around. Come to the chat, ask questions, see what's up. We're still going to chill a bit now, play some games later. And yeah, you know, twitch.tv slash 0OOC. That's me, yours truly, your host. Watchmework.com at the same time. Great to be there for the fourth time. And on YouTube live stream we are in three places at once and it's awesome thank you guys so much for tuning in you could see my fingers today for the first time <laughs> hope that was fun i hope you enjoy that and yeah rock and roll i'll see you guys next week peace out bingo Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, all with the mouse. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. That was zero. Switching out zero four. Let me just turn off all these congruent streams happening everywhere. Whoops.